Hey everybody, and welcome back to Nuffles Playbook. I'm Tyler, and today we're gonna to talk about 10 advanced tips for Blood Bowl in 10 minutes or less. There's a whole bunch of great standard tips like do your risky moves last, uh, move all your safe moves first, um, and how to throw good blocks and all that. Uh, I'm gonna link a really good video to that to uh, Bonehead's podcast, talks about some of the top five best things you can do. Um, and those are sort of the basic great moves. Here's 10 tips for uh, players who maybe are on your way to a game right now, or that uh, maybe you haven't thought of and you're looking to get better. Let's get right to it. Here we go. 10 Blood Bowl advanced tips in 10 minutes. All right, here we go. Tip number one, plan for the blitz slash quick snap on the kickoff event. So this comes up on a nine or a 10 on the kickoff event, and there are very few kickoff events that will more mess up your plays than these two events, especially the blitz. I think every uh, offensive setup that you set should protect for both of the wings. Just in the event the opponent rolls this, they end up kicking the ball shallow, then they blitz in, knock over the one guy, and then they catch the ball themselves. It can absolutely ruin a drive. So you should plan for that to come up. And on the same side, when you're setting up for defense, be wary putting people only one square off of the line because a quick snap could allow those players to just move forward one square and then get more blocks on you for the next time. So in all your offensive and defensive setups, look out for those two events. Next up, we got every model that you base will get hit. So players, especially teams that have a uh, strength advantage, think that they're gonna be better off if they just base everybody, base as many as you can. And now maybe that might be true for a very weak team such as like halflings or something, but a good player will really utilize their assists and move around to sort of chain assists, like this guy to here, then he blocks free, then he goes to here, to make sure that they're getting two die blocks on all of your guys over and over again. And sometimes it can be as simple as just them taking a one die block or maybe a two die block uphill and now suddenly they freed something you weren't expecting. So it's better to sort of think that when you look at the board that if I'm basing my models, I'm meaning I'm choosing to take my models on my turn and put them next to yours without a blitz or anything, you need to be prepared for your guys to be hit. If you're not okay for them being hit, then you shouldn't put them at all. You should do more of a screen or stay one square away from them from there. All right, on tip number three, plan who gets the ball after the blitz. This is a move that I see a lot of players spend a, a bunch of time just trying to figure out how do I blitz the ball carrier? And that's great, you absolutely need to do that. But once you have achieved that, uh, that goal, or you know how you're going to achieve that goal, figure out who is going to pick up the ball once the ball pops out. One, think about when you blitz, is the ball gonna, where could the ball go? The eight squares around him where the ball could go. And uh, then two, whenever it drops into the eight squares, which of my players are gonna be able to get in there and get the ball? What this really means is that often that a player who's close by that you might just choose to like come in for the assist, you might wanna actually take one step further away and choose a player that uh, maybe has to move their full movement to come in and get the assist that you might not have thought to brought down so that the closer player is able to pick up the ball if and when you are able to knock it out. This can also help make sure that you're not pushing the player into an area where if the ball uh, pops out, it'll go out of bounds or fall into one of their hands. You wanna make sure it's always advantageous to you. All right, tip number four, we're on to protect your most powerful players, the blitz and retreat. So blitz really comes from the, the blitz Krieg where it's a lightning strike, you come in, but you also need to be able to fall back. Um, one of your best players to blitz with is a block mighty blow piece, but that piece also has a big target on their back because they're so deadly. Uh, a great tactic for this is for you to put that player behind your own little screen. Keep two people in front of them, or even three people in front of them. Run in three squares, hit your blitz for the fourth square, then fall back two to three squares, depending on their speed. Keep those players protected back behind everything because they do have targets on their back and you're able to use them over and over again. You're gonna be tempted to try and take that player and base them and then uh, have them always be around, but that means they're getting counter block and you wanna keep your good players around longer than their players. On to tip number five, chain pushing your way in. So chain pushing is a whole huge topic that I'll do a video on uh, soon and I'll come back and link it to this video when it does. Um, but if you don't have anyone near the ball carrier and there's no way to blitz in, say they have a really good cage or something like that, but um, maybe you have somebody who's one square away or there's a whole big group of people in an area. Take a look and see if you can 
run a couple more players in, clog up some holes, and chain push one of your own guys. Even if your own guys knocked down, chain one of your knocked guy, knocked down guys next to the ball carrier, then blitz, standing that person up and handing them. If they're surrounded by more players, bring in more players to turn off those other assists. Chain pushing, again, is a massive topic and is a huge uh, endeavor in and of itself. So definitely take uh, the time to look in more to that. But chain pushing is a powerful tool, especially when you're utilizing Frenzy. Next up, we've got count the squares to the end zone. This doesn't feel like it should be an advanced tip, uh, but I can't tell you how many times myself or uh, my opponent will look down on the board, see that it's turn six, and know that there's it's already impossible to score, or very, very unlikely. Even worse, if it's turn seven or turn eight, that maybe if they just move that guy one more space forward, you'd be able to do it. Me personally, I like to try and do my touchdowns without any go for it. We all know what happens when you try and do a go for it on the end zone or on the, uh, the, the goal line. So count your squares ahead of time and sort of know for your team, okay, I'm a six square movement team. My ball carriers move six. So that means that they can only move 12 squares um, when the pitch is 13 from the halfway line. So what does that mean and where you need to be to move forward? Also on that note, I'd recommend try your go for it that you need to do um, a turn before you get to the end zone, because if you drop the ball there, then maybe you have another chance next turn to pick it up and run it down or make a handoff or something. But if you wait till turn eight or turn 16 to try and do that last touchdown, then when you run in, you might uh, fall down and you have no chance to recover it because it's a turnover. Moving on to the next one is fouling high value TVs. Uh, uh, high value players and fouling scoring threats. So many players love to foul uh, all the time as much as they can, especially stunty teams. I'm much more surgical when it comes to that. I don't want to lose my players to anything. But when you look at a high value player that has gone down, maybe they've blitzed into your side and then you're able to get around them. Taking them off the pitch is worth it. You're, you're uh, analyzing if I lose this lineman who's fouling versus Morgan Thorg, you know, is it worth that I lost my guy versus them? That's a good foul. Um, similarly, if a player's players often like to score with just like one or two players repeatedly over and over, over, over again, check out the star player total. If they go down, that player, that coach is using that player as a crutch. So try and foul them and get them out of there as quick as you can. All right, next up, we got identify problem players ASAP and keep track of them. This goes very well with the fouling thing. At the beginning of the game and periodically throughout the game, you should always look down and say, okay, where is that tackle player? Where is that mighty bow player? Where is that extra arm sure hands player? Where's the player that is gonna mess up all of my plans for everything? Where's that claw guy if you're playing dwarves or any high value armor team? Keep track of where those players are and make sure that that when you set up, you know that, okay, that player's on the right side of the field. So if I get the ball, I should try and run left to get around it. Or if I do run right, or I need to run right, I should blitz that target, even if it's not necessarily the best choice, because that player with those skills is so much more of a threat than just a normal dice roll to try and knock you guys down. Especially once you get later into your leagues or high level tournament play where you've got blodge guys, then all of a sudden the wrestle strip ball guy, it becomes the most dangerous man on the whole field. Even though he's probably not going to hurt you, he's gonna make him win or lose games. So pay attention to those players and maybe you can even foul them. Next up, we've got blocking with block uphill is better than dodging for a three plus dodge. So on a three plus dodge, you're looking at like 33% chance or something in there. And the odds are just a little bit better that with block, um, you will get any result other than double skulls um, about 34, 35% of the time. So when you have a uh, strength three block piece versus a strength five no skills piece, you know, big guy or something, and you're thinking about dodging away, well, it's a lot more advantageous to actually take your block, uh, your two die uphill block, which I normally never do, but there's a 25% chance that you roll both down, or even, yeah, I think it's even higher than that, but that you roll both down or, or double pals and they have to choose that. There's a chance you'll knock down that big guy when there's just about the same chance you'll knock yourself down. So it's a better move. Next up is uh, losing is probably better than a dead key player. Now, this is favoring a lot towards league play. Uh, and if you're in a tournament play, it's just more of a thing to think about like early on in the game. 
Um, you may not want to take like five dodges into an area in order to knock out the ball and then a you know four plus pickup and then a throw play um, to try and win the game. If that puts a star player on your team, you know, high value um, leveled up player on your team at great risk, like there people often say, oh, well, I've got nothing to lose at this point. I might as well go for it. It's like, well, that's not true. You really can lose a valuable player. You've spent many games leveling up. So you want to look into that. You want to watch out for that type of uh, of play and not be nihilistic about it. All right, man. So those are the uh, 10 uh, advanced Blood Bowl tips in 10 minutes. I will give one bonus tip, and that is that uh, if your team is able to do a one-turn touchdown in any way, either by pushing off the line of, the line of scrimmage uh, with a movement eight or movement nine uh, piece or with a throw teammate one-turn touchdown, practice it. Know how to do it. Know how to set it up and how you're going to be able to, to make that happen. If you can't do a one-turn touchdown, practice a two-turn touchdown with your team of what that takes. What does that look like? Just to assume you know set up at home and assume everything goes right and uh, how would you achieve that so when the pressure comes and you have the opportunity um the ball's kicked to you on turn eight you know what you're doing all right gang thanks so much for joining me on uh, nuffles playbook it's a quick video and i hope you enjoyed these tips if you've got more tips and would like me to do another one of these you know leave it down on the doobly-doo and i'll see you next time thanks so much